Hey, this is Ashley, and you guys are watching Ashley Epidemic, and I am here for my very first K-Drama Watch Along Recap. So, we are going to be talking about 2017's While You Were Sleeping, which stars Suzy Bay and Lee Jong Suk, and there's a bunch of other people in it as well, obviously, but we're going to be talking about the first four episodes. Um, when I say first four episodes, I mean the full length episodes. Um, I believe that these episodes also were split into half, so it's technically 32 episodes, but they're each half an hour comprises to make the one single episode. So I'm going to be speaking of them as if they were the combined full hour length episode. So we're talking about the first four hours of While You Were Sleeping. Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So as I mentioned, um, it stars Suzy Bay and Lee Jong Suk. So Suzy is the character Hong Ju and Jung Suk is Jae Chen. So that is how I will be referring to them going forward, Hong Ju and Jae Chen, but that is who they are in case you were wondering. Episode one, it starts off with a dream. So the show very quickly establishes its concept, which is that when certain people dream, they are able to see their future. And in seeing their future, they can potentially change things if they go out and then pursue changing the future in such a way. But they are capable of seeing what will happen and then it plays out. We learn pretty early on that this has caused Hong Ju to quit her job and as a result she kind of stays at home and works for her mom at her mom's shop. From what I was able to gather from the early bit of the episode was that Hong Ju fears some sort of upcoming accident, some sort of potential accident that is going to happen that would endanger her own life and as a result she has quit her job and removed herself to try to avoid that. Through the episode, we just get a lot of really light material in this one where we get to know Hongju a bit more. We get to know Jae Chan and his brother a bit more, and we just get to start to see a little bit of their dynamic, but not too much. The real meat and potatoes of the episode really starts to come towards the end where we get Hongju's um, first real dream that actually has a lot of impact, and that is the dream that we see that it ends up being Hongju dying and um, that is because she gets into a car accident with her date Yo Bum. I do mention the name Yo Bum because he is an important character who has ties to Jay Chan as well. Pretty much she ends up in this situation where she ends up dying and this is when it is first revealed that it is not actually Hongju's dream but it is Jay Chan's dream and it seems that both Hongju and Jae Chan are capable of these sorts of dreams which spurs Jae Chan into action and Jae Chan not only takes this dream but then actively pursues making sure that this dream does not come to pass he feels bad for her and ultimately we see that Jae Chan manages to save Hongju moving between episodes one and two we get the bit of reveal that while Jae Chan was able to change the future, Hong Ju's never been able to manage to do that. So she gets very excited and starts telling him about how she's capable of doing this as well. And they start to potentially have a bond, but Jae Chan pretty much shuts it down. Hong Ju's not having this. And into the second episode, she's deep into pretty much following Jay Chen around to try to get him to acknowledge her and try to form some sort of bond because this is somebody who she can really relate to. And Jay Chen is pretty much ready to completely shut it down because to him he feels that with having this power it's a lot of pressure on him because that means that he has to try to save people and if he fails to save people he's going to feel like a failure. Um, it, he pretty much he's taking all the responsibility. So there is also the high school drama in which the high school drama So Yun is a high school pianist. She's extremely talented, and her father is extremely abusive. And 
Soyun wants to get out of this situation and in doing this she has found out a little bit about her plan to try to make sure that her father dies by none only none other than Jae Chan's brother Sungwoon. We start to see more things be revealed about this high school pianist storyline in which we learn that um, Wu-Tek, who is the person who was hit by the car in the dream that Jae Chen ended up saving Hongju from. So in that dream, essentially, Hongju and Wu-Tek ended up dead. Jae Chen obviously didn't focus on Wu-Tek because he didn't know Wu-Tek, but Wu-Tek also has the ability to see these dreams. So in ex somehow these three people are tied together. They all have this ability. They're all able to see how things will turn out. And it's, they're all just tied together somehow, but we don't know exactly how yet. We do start to see more of the flashbacks to their childhood, and we start to see what is going on with each of the different characters, um, but how they're actually tied together isn't entirely clear. It does seem that they are all surrounded by a particular death, but what and the reason behind how they are related and how they are tied to this isn't entirely clear yet. In this, as I mentioned, the high school pianist drama has continued to unfold. wu Tae does take steps to try to prevent things from happening the way that he sees in his first initial dream, and he is also successful at doing that. Um, it ultimately, in the end, um, it makes it so that Seon's father isn't killed, but they are permanently separated from him. And in that, Seon and her mother end up going and living with Hongju and her mother. Um, so, because in saving the situation, they all manage to get tied in because that is the recurring theme that happens. But overall, this third episode is largely focused on that high school pianist drama and resolving that, but we do have some really funny moments, especially with um, Hongju, and she's talking about after the two move in, why there's poop in the toilet and that they need to go get a plunger because it's like cow poop. <laughs> it was just really funny. And finally, we have episode number four. The big highlights in this for me were the formation of the dream team. We have Wu Taek, Jae Chen, and Hongju finally coming together, agreeing to kind of work and keep an eye on each other since the focus of the dreams always seems to be one of the other people. So Jae Chen always dreams of Hongju and so on and so forth. They all dream about one particular person. So in that, they're able to watch out for each other to make sure that nobody ends up dead. We also get more of a resolution with Seon and her drama. Um, essentially, the police know that there was foul play abound and that they wanted to give the mother the chance to choose what she wanted rather than force on them the situation that they thought it should be. Also, there was the really, really funny moment with the kiss in this episode. Um, so in one instance of the kiss, because we did see it twice because one was in a dream, Hongju was going up on her tiptoes to try to go in for the kiss. And what Jay Chen did was he also went on his tiptoes and she's like, what are you doing? It was actually a really funny moment and a really nice twist on the way things usually are. But we did later get the actual kiss in which Hongju went up and Jay Chen actually went in for the kiss. So we also saw, saw the beginning of this sort of relationship. They haven't really cemented anything, but they have kind of at least admitted that there might be some sort of feelings going on there. Well, the show is easy to follow, but it does require attention because you go from a present and a dream, and then you also switch into what is actually the dream and what is not the present and what is actually happening. And the show does really well at cueing you in to what is and what isn't actually a dream. However, sometimes it's hard to know until after that has happened. Um, it is also really easy to know who is the person who's actually dreaming because whoever is in harm is going to be tied to one specific person since they all dream about one person. But overall, we're four episodes in and we are starting to get this bond 
amongst the main three characters, which is really enjoyable because they have a really, really great dynamic. Um, I have now seen Jong Suk in a few different things, and I per I have actually come to really love when Jong Suk is in a lighter role. This one is kind of a mid ground. He's not super serious, but he's also not as light as I've seen him possibly be. So we do get elements of the lightness, but we get the more serious. And it's just, it's Jung Suk being a really great actor in general. I'm really enjoying the first four episodes. I will admit I have seen this show already. I did watch it when it, just after it first came out. So it's been well over a year since I have watched it. So much of it is weak in my memory and I never actually finished it. I did come close, but I didn't finish it. So it'll be fun to actually go through and finish it. So next week we are going to be checking out the next four episodes, episodes five through eight. And go ahead and leave your comments about these first four episodes down here, down below. If you want to talk about the next episodes, go to the discord and yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.